Good morning, folks. Engineer 775 just got to our new off-grid site. We're uh, about to build a 32-panel fixed angle ground mount from Sinclair. And we're going to convert that end of a shipping container into a powerhouse that will supply power and water. There is a well down here. We're also going to put a pump in there and we're going to bring power and water up to this powerhouse. So it's going to be the shipping container mech room project off grid. Dealy wop. Okay. So we got a pound post, 12 foot four, 12 foot post. Abraham just and I just got here. We're uh, going to do a layout here with a pathfinder, make sure we're good. And our, we have an obstacle here. We have two septic lines that cross where we want to go. So of course we do. All right, we are going to get this done no matter what. The beauty of the driver, even if it's pouring down rain, is we'd never get a concrete truck in here or we'd never get it out. So oh, get it in here. yeah, we just pounded this post 85 inches in the ground. We're about to do post number two. We're going to try to get these four posts in here no matter what. So this one drove nice, didn't hit rock on this one at all. Always oh, yeah. thankful for that. So we got to get solar up there and we don't care. We have this new mobile app and well, we've had it for a couple years now. It's the get to work app and it never shows that it's raining. So, and it overrides get all- Get to work app never lies. And it, and it overrides all other apps, especially weather apps. So get to work. All right, we've had all we can stands. We can't stands no more. We are, we got the post pounded, which was great. And that's always my most stressful part. Once that's in, I'm good to go. We got a lot of trenching to do, septics to reveal and all that fun stuff. So we got it in, but it's gonna rain all afternoon, says Mr. Radar. So the get to work app got overridden. Okay, day two, rain has cleared out. Still got a lot of mud, but uh, finally get to build this. We could have finished this all yesterday if we didn't get rained out, but boo-hoo me. All right, what a contrast today is compared to yesterday. Beautiful. So I'm building this 32 panel, 12.8 kilowatt, Axitec system with a solar arc eventually it'll be a dual solar arc but we're just uh building single solar arc three arc batteries 32 panels i mean he does have room down here for more solar if you ever wanted to put another array um, well we'll figure that out later but uh we've got to get up to the mech room all right not sure if this is wired in right but it's a micro air micro air easy start and it looks like the hot wire was spliced to the brown wire on the micro air. The orange wire goes to the hermetic terminal on the capacitor. The red wire from the red wire stays on the common and there's a purple wire. There's a white wire that comes down here to this contactor. And then the black wire goes down on that terminal. All right, this is a shipping container and mechanical room. Uh, we're trying to build this for expansion. Pretty sure the customer wants to add an inverter. And uh, we're starting off with a 12K outdoor unit, Solark. And we're gonna put some arc batteries in here. Eventually I'll have probably six or seven arc batteries. And we're gonna put an electrical panel here going to leave a space for a future inverter. I think we're going to leave that there. Put a 12K here. I'm going to put a little 100 amp bypass in now. So uh, the trick is building it to the drawings that we submitted to the AHJ, authority having jurisdiction, and building it to that, but then also planning the system to be expanded easily without having to tear it all down. So we're getting into a lot of that where we build a, get up, get a system up and working and then expand it after that so i'm gonna put a little two foot gutter to expand the corners are great they just buy you they're just uh they're awesome they add 16 inches but these 10 inch uh wiring troughs are 
awesome, expensive, but they just do a nice job. They help us do a nice job. All right, we're gonna get these batteries in here. We got three of the arcs Abraham's getting into, putting these uh, bases on. A lot of people are asking why why do we set batteries on the ground? There's still the old wives' tale that just won't won't go away about setting batteries on the floor. That had to do with old wooden box with flooded lead acid batteries from 100 years ago. Um, these were designed to set on the floor. And the way we're gonna wire these, because they're sitting on the floor, we don't really have easy access to these terminals. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, parallel a group of three, and then we're gonna take that group of three to a combiner, a 600 amp combiner. And then when we expand, we'll take another group of three to that 600 amp combiner and then connect it to the two inverters. So a little different move. You can take each battery to a combiner, but that's a lot of wiring. You have terminals on the top, and we're going to use the top terminals and set it up vertically. Okay, that'll make more sense when you see it installed. Oh, that's Purdy down there. What a nice solar window this customer has. He's going to do extremely well. I was, it's 3.12 kilowatts, 13.12 kilowatts. Oh my goodness, it's getting late. I thought I told you 12.8, but it's 13.12. All right, let's get loaded up. It's Friday. Day two, rough in, getting our pipes up for our water, water coming in, water going out. I uh, got a, a home line panel for the mech room, inverter, 12K is mounted. Kind of building this to put a 12K here in the future when they expand and we'll set the batteries between the two electrical panels. This might get a 200 amp transfer switch later, not sure. And we've got, we're gonna put a generator inlet plug out here. <laughs> so we got that gutter up. We're gonna probably put a generator inlet plug right under here. Let's bring that in. We got our water stubbed in, a hydrant, a valve box, kind of with a master valve to go to the home. And this is all roughed in. These are for our county here, inspection pipes. I can stick a tape down. These go to the top of the gutter. I mean, top of the conduits. So we're at least two foot down to the to the pipe. Got to take, continue my water well line. And the electrical is going to go around to the well, which is behind the solar array. And then uh, backfill this and call for inspection tomorrow, or it's. Call in tomorrow for inspection on Wednesday. Uh, the beginning of day three, we just uh, pulled our number eights in. We could have done this with tens, but I had some cutoffs that were long enough. So this is great. It's always great when the wire from the last job covers you on the next job. So this is our DC pull. We've got uh, four conductors and a ground that will we have enough and we'll bring that in through the wiring troughs and feed it up into the solar arc right there and get these batteries charging so this is the day we like to get the batteries charging and software updates and make sure everything works with the inverter while we're working on the ac side of things we get the dc going and get it ready into day three we got the water line and power to the well down to the well and uh, Abraham and Wes are putting the pump in the well using a well wheelie this isn't an eight inch well we got the array final final wired today uh, I've got all ditches backfilled hydrants frost free hydrants irrigation boxes hydrants down there irrigation boxes here these little gray pipes are just inspection ports for the Inspector to stick his tape down tomorrow, check our trench depths. Master uh, box there, we gotta reinforce that there, hydrant. We added the generator inlet today, bonded the gutter, and uh, brought our solar in and started charging the batteries, actually filled the batteries. Got it updated. Willis is working feverishly to get a light so he can see. Cool. We got a 
three quarter EMT move over there out of the gutter. Gonna have a light in here soon. Got the Solark updated latest software. Dongle fine. Keep behaving, battery's full, no loads yet. I'm gonna put a massive LED lamp on it soon. Tomorrow we'll run this well pump, see how it does, and get that plumbed in. We still have, there's always lots to do. So much to do, so little time. I'm gonna put a bypass in, no matter what Willis says, for the uh, generator bypass. Hey, I didn't say we <laughs> Don't throw me under the bus, he said. Oh, we're using the EcoFlow Delta to keep things alive here today. Things are charging. Are you able to charge your phone on it? Yes, sir. Good. All right. All right. Um, time to wrap up, clean up, and we'll be back tomorrow. We are, from our measurements, out of the floodplain. That's one thing that uh, we shouldn't have got a permit, but they gave us one. And now they're questioning whether or not we're in a floodplain. Wouldn't that be great to have to move that whole array? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's not think about that. All right, we're uh, wrapping up on this day three. Day four will be testing and loads and hopefully pass inspection. This is kind of a different one, running everything to a shipping container, mechanical room first. And then as they build build out, I think they're the, the trailer might be temporary because they're going to build a house up behind it. So I'm not quite sure of the plans, but uh, we've got them some power and water. All right, we're back in the mech room on, what day is it? Day four? <laughs> it's Wednesday, boss. It's Wednesday. All right, we got, we're about to have an inspector here, I hope. Let's inspect our electrical. And Abraham's, what are you doing over there? Wrap, up the, wrapping up the plumb. Wrapping up the plumbing to, so we can test out. That's the only load we got on the system right now, other than this giant LED light. Hey, we're charging 18 volt batteries over there, oh, Okay, boss. okay, we got it loaded. So Lark's just cooking a whole 90 watts. Yesterday we were bringing down 10 kilowatts charging these batteries up, but they are full. All right, we're gonna wrap this up, neaten it up here and get it ready for the inspectors. All right, about four and a half days to do this water and power project for this customer in a shipping container. Three ARC batteries, Solar 12K, a little bit of lighting, a bypass, a generator inlet, Nice 44 gallon bladder tank. Um, we've kind of built it to expand to, you could put a, an inverter here, an inverter there. We've got a little extension we can add on to there if we needed to. So everything is good. We're using a whopping 10 watts of power. And uh, so we're just buttoning up, cleaning up. I don't have internet, but we did build a plant. It's got the latest, greatest software on it. And, uh, yeah, so it is updated, so pretty good. Again, we like to just put a piece of plywood up, surface mount everything, makes everything easy. Plenty of room for expansion, so now this customer can take off and take the water and power to their house. And uh, just past inspection, very thankful for that. Always, always thankful for a, it's passing the first time around. And uh, so we're just wrapping it up. I'm gonna put that gen inlet in because I, I got the wrong generator inlet. Not anymore, we got the right one. All right, thanks, Willis. That's just one I've been trying to get rid of. I had it in the shop for 100 years. Didn't look, it was 120 volt. Duh. All right, so anyway, this is still cranking along nicely. We got spigots in here, irrigation boxes, eight inch well filled with goodies, simple pumps well pumps soft start well pumps um customer added a micro air system to his um condensing unit we're not um hooking up the house he wanted to do that so we're letting him but we're just about wrapped up a couple little things siliconing things abraham's just buttoning up a few things and so is mr willis and then we're out of here another job well done by the crew all right, if you need help, this is a completely, well, the goal here, even though the county kind of fought it, was to 
to a complete off-grid build. So there's no service in here, no power run, and it's off the grid. And it'll have 37 and a half amps continuous, which 9,000 watts, which in most, unless, uh, in most cases, that's not gonna be enough unless you're really good at managing your loads. Um, and maybe it is with a load manager. As I keep alluding to, I don't have my hands on one yet. I'm just really wanting one. So that should be out in the next few weeks, I hope, to test. All right, ARC batteries have been doing great. If you need a system, let me know. I can get you one. I know we have our consultation sign up, and sometimes that is scheduled out into February. But if you know what you want, just call me. Just call Practical Preppers and say, hey, I want this. You don't have to wait for months uh, on me to do a consultation. The consultations are scheduled so far out because I'm working installs, and I save them for Friday night and Saturday night. That's how I spend my weekends, doing consults. But if you really know what you want, you've watched the videos, and you want a solar and battery system, panels, ground mounts, just call me. I had four customers come to my house Saturday and pick up equipment. So that's an option always. The shipping, the shipping has become insane. We're trying to beat that and be a distributor of some of these components to help them folks out. All right, this is Engineer 775 signing out from the shipping container turned into a mech room. <laughs>